sticky note number two. We're going to talk about office occupancy now, Patrick. Uh, what's interesting is a new chart I'm going to put up on the screen here is uh, showing office the office occupancy index as of April 15th, which is essentially a couple weeks ago, is 47% of what it was pre-pandemic. That means it's half of what it was, Patrick. And by the way, this is considerably better. This by this is in Toronto, okay? Just to, uh, the, the one, there's one that's tracked for, there's a different one that's tracked for Vancouver, different statistics. The point is 47%, as low as that is, and it is quite low. Listen, that's half of what it was pre-pandemic. And if I took us back, and I rewound the tape to pre-pandemic in, in, call it November 2019. And I said, Patrick, in three years, the office occupancy is going to be 47%, half, less than half of what it is today in three years from now. Uh, we would all say, oh my God, that's a problem. We have to address this. And, and as, our, as investors, we have to keep an eye on this. Well, that's the reality of what's happening now. 47%. And that's quite good, Patrick, in Toronto, because there's other cities like San Francisco and many others that are much lower than this. So fascinating because there's a problem brewing that we've actually been pointing out for some time, and this will come home to roost sooner or later. Well, 100% it will come home to roost. Now, first off, you know, we have to look into the future and say, well, will it get to 60%. Will it get to 75%? Well, we know that it won't go back to what it was pre-pandemic. I mean, just consider this, JG. The government workers alone, who are not being mandated to go back yet, and who have, even in conversation, pushed back and said, no, we're not going back. So, of course, what's happening in Toronto, as an example, same thing in Vancouver, by the way. You know, they track it differently in Vancouver. One of the things that they have is a way uh, I can't remember the company that tracks cell phone signals. So in other words, they have a lot of data and history of how many cell phones are being used downtown Vancouver, and they've seen it drop by 50%. So as busy as Vancouver feels and seems, it isn't actually from an office point of view, people are not working. They're not going to work downtown. So there's this, the gap in Vancouver similar statistically or by the data that Toronto is. Toronto, busy Tuesday, Wednesday is their peak. And uh, Thursday and then Friday, they drop right off. And there is some numbers attached to those dates. The point is this. It isn't going to go back to what it was. was. Leases, Leases are, are going, going to, be to be renewing. renewing. And, and this, this is, is where businesses, businesses are, are either going, going to not, not be renewing their leases, leases at all, or they're going to be reconfiguring, renegotiating, saying, no, I want smaller space. space. I don't I need this much space. space. So they're, so they're going to be, be cutting costs. And, and one of the ways, ways that they're, they're going to do it is by, by cutting back on office space. space. So when we look at that, it means, number one, what it's going to mean to the banks and what is it going to mean to the owners of those buildings. Now, most of the buildings are owned by you know, large corporations, large REITs, investment. But that has the ripple effect, which we talked about before, is if that's part of what your retirement fund is invested in, what does that mean to the retirement fund? So all of these things, there's a ripple effect that can, uh, that can occur, is likely to occur. I don't think we're going to be like the U.S. when we'll talk a little bit about bank failures, where 85% of commercial real estate in the U.S., is financed by small banks, independent banks, which is what they are in uh, the US. That's gonna be a far bigger problem. Of course, what we don't know is what is the ripple effect here in Canada? Yeah, and that's a, this is a good example, Patrick, where you know what happens in the US, you know, definitely you like to say, you know, when, when uh, the US, uh, you know, catches a cold, or what, what's your saying? When the US sneezes, Canada catches a cold? Is that what you say? Yeah, so, uh, which is always interesting, but, if you look at, for example, and we'll, we're, I'm going to kind of draw an analogy to, to the office uh, conversation we're having, but you know, the U.S. and kind of the U.S. Uh, layoffs that have happened, a ton of layoffs have happened in the last six, eight months in the U.S. We haven't seen that much of that here in Canada. In fact, you and I uh, talked about it a while ago. We couldn't name any big Canadian corporation or any cor big corporation in Canada that's had massive layoffs like they have in the States. So it's not that just because it happens in the U.S., it's automatically going to happen in Canada. That's not necessarily the case. And it's the same with office. Our office uh, landscape is, a, is quite a bit different here in Canada than it is in the U.S. But that being said, Patrick, these this and we've been talking about this for some time. And we want to tell investors to look into the future because this really isn't going to show up for one, two, three, five, ten years is where you're going to start to see this trend. 
office and by the nature of their leases, which are very long leases, five years minimum, 10 years most often, and often 15 and 20 year leases, this takes a long time to work its way through the market because of these long-term leases. Uh, and over time, we are going to repurpose this space. That's what I think is going to happen is they're going to be repurposing this space into condos or industrial or other type of space that isn't office related because it's pretty clear to me that that we will not see that type of occupancy go back into office space. The work from home movement, which you and I have been calling out now for like three years since the pandemic started, that has taken hold and will continue. And then I think the thing that I want to watch and I'm going to pay attention to is that right now the downtown core of Toronto still has demand for condos. But I think that there's a consideration that if the demand for uh, working from the downtown core, in other words, office space isn't going to be occupied, and we see a bunch of condos come online in the coming years, I don't know what's going to happen in terms of demand for those condos. I think it's something that we got to watch. Is the demand going to kind of fluctuate to match the demand of commercial space and workers being downtown? These are all things that we have to correlate and look at and pay attention to. Right now, it seems to be okay. Having said that, more units are coming online in the downtown core. And will there be the demand for them that is anticipated given a lot of these decisions were made back in 2019, 2018, when things were better, so condos were being built, all of a sudden they're going to start to come to fruition. And there may be some concern there for those individuals who have invested in that pre-construction. If they weren't really paying attention to the details, that might catch up to some people. Definitely a tricky time for office investment, office occupancy, definitely a tricky time and something for investors to watch out for. JG. Good shot, eh? Your sticky notes are right on. Like, wow. Dude, I, I just, I needed that office break. Now my aim is just flawless. Well, you're back to the Michael Jordan of sticky notes. Like, good for you. If you like what you learned here, go to the description below and subscribe for our free insiders newsletter, where you can also stay up to date for our upcoming events and our courses. If you want to see more stuff like this, click here. If you want to see the entire show, click there.